Hello, my loves. So truth be told, um, the entire two hour tutorial that I just did online didn't actually save properly. So I'm doing another one. Cause that's how much I love you. Um, just for all of the people that couldn't actually make the live tutorial. So I can upload this one to the website. It's probably gonna take me a thousand years like last time, but oh well, I've got time, you know? So I'm just going to make sure that you've got all of your bits and pieces first. Um, first things first, have you uh, followed the Mud Clay Play playlist on Spotify? Because if you haven't, you're bloody missing out. Um, it is mud.clayplay on Spotify and you've got two playlists. One, my favourite is probably Mud Fridays, but then you've got Isoclation as well. It's a banger, absolute banger. I reckon you'll love it. So we wanna make sure we've got our mud, our balls, um, delivered direct to your door. And then we wanna make sure we've got our tools as well. So you guys might have these tool kits. Hopefully you do, because they're great. Um, but if you don't, then just grab a knife, a fork and a spoon. That's all you're gonna need and you'll be golden. So this is my favorite tool. It's actually a, uh, it's a tool to trim your clay, trim clay that you don't actually want on your shape, but I use it to decorate and to cut cute little grooves in the clay, things like that. Um, my total fave. Um, then you've got this little guy here. It's a bit dirty because I just used it for two hours. Um, but this is similar to your spoon in that it has that groove there. It's gonna be really good for joining um, all of the bits that we're gonna be joining. And then this guy is great because you've actually got um, a point on there that's going to be perfect for your scoring. Um, I'll let you know what scoring is in a tick. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. So we're going to be creating something similar to this little guy here. Um, what I actually just created um, in the tutorial that I did like 20 minutes ago was this one. So you can really go crazy with it. You can create whatever you want. You can free ball it, just go for your life. Um, I'm just gonna be showing you a couple of techniques that can actually create a similar shape to that. But it's a wonky vase tutorial. So, you know, make it wonky, do whatever you want. Um, that's the nice thing about it. Uh, so Anriel, one of my friends slash students created this little guy. So she's just done some cute little handles here and she's done a flatter surface there. Um, and some other handles that you can do. I like these ones. I mean, to be quite honest, these look like ears. It wasn't what I was going for originally, but you know, still okay. Uh, or you could do something like this. Just go crazy on all the handles. So I've made these out of coils um, and I've just done one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven handles. Nuts. So some of you um, will also have your glaze kits. So your glaze kits you're going to need for after the first firing of your clay. I'll explain a bit more about that later, but that will give us um, a really beautiful speckle here super nice it's my fave um so you're going to also want a little dish like this so you can make your slip your slip is actually the glue that's going to join the handles to your vessel so we're really going to need that super important you're also going to need if you don't have one of these which is fine you can just use your wine bottle you can use the vase you can use anything cylindrical that's actually going to roll out your clay. Um, the reason we need to roll out the clay is because we need to actually create our slab. So this cylinder here, uh, we use slab work. This here, um, your sphere, we actually use a pinch technique. So we're using two of the three techniques. We've got slab work, coiling and pinch work. We're gonna be using slab work and uh, pinch work today. Um, you also need a little bit of water, so it's good. 
to have a little spray bottle handy. If you don't have a spray bottle, don't even worry about it. You can just use a little bit of water um, in a dish. Um, so really, we're going to be using this uh, whenever our clay dries out a little bit. So you just want to touch base with your clay and see if it is a little bit too dry. If it is, just use a little bit of water. No worries. But we're also going to be using it for our slip as well that we'll make in a little bit of time. Now, the other thing that you're going to need is actually um, your cheese board, obviously. Hopefully you've already made it. Um, and your beverage, you know, let's just, cheers. Hmm. Hopefully you've got the tunes flowing. I wish I could have mine on, but I think it would like, you know, ruin your experience. And I don't want to do that. Alrighty, so we're going to get started. Now, whenever you are not using a section of your clay, you want to make sure that it's not exposed to the elements. So you want to actually wrap it back up. Um, we're just going to break off a third of our clay here to create maybe even not a third, like maybe even just slightly underneath the third. I'm gonna roll this back up. If I don't, it is actually gonna dry out super quick and we don't want that. We do not want that. You can also use a wet dishcloth to cover your clay um, and that's going to keep it moist as well. Um, P.S. This book is actually excellent. Mastering Hand Building um, by Sunshine Cobb. What a great name. Um, you can get it off the book depository. It's got some really, really, really good techniques in it. They're primo. Um, and it will really help you out with all of the techniques. I'm also creating with uh, my beautiful graphic designer, Sarah and Ainsley. She's a bloody wizard. Um, I'm going to be creating or have started creating um, some line drawing instructions. So some really beautiful visual instructions for you guys on how to do the three techniques. So that will be available to you in a tickle, I'm sure. Might just have a little bit more of this. I'm just dancing to your music because I don't have any. All right. So you're making a ball, basically, a little sphere. Doesn't have to be perfect, but you don't want it to be super cracked or anything because we're going to be actually creating, to begin with, our sphere here. So we're going to um, be building that part first and then after we've built that, we're going to be creating the cylinder. So I'm just going to roll this. And then what you want to do is you want to press your thumb three quarters of the way down. So three quarters of the way down like that. You want to use your palm to cup this. And then you want to start to pull your clay up. Just like this. Up and in. So you see what I'm doing here is I'm just pulling my clay from the bottom. And I'm just making this shape slightly bigger as I go, just really gently. It's really normal for your clay to crack. That's fine. See, mine's cracking too. We're all in this together. Um, but you just want to make sure that after a while, you're actually just smoothing that out as well again. So one really important thing when I'm actually widening this and bringing it up making it larger is that I actually am not just bringing the clay up I'm actually pulling it into the cylinder so this is a little bit challenging to do actually um, so you want to be kind of careful you're pressing this out and then you're pulling it in so that we're creating that um, cylinder shape Again, supernatural for your shape to be cracking a little bit. We'll sort that out in a bit. Don't worry too much about it. 
Now, I don't really work with like specific grams of clay and being super precise. I love that uh, everybody's shape tonight is going to be super different. See, I'm going to need a little bit more water on mine. You know, we're all making the same thing, but it's going to come out so different because our interpretations of it are just going to be entirely different and what our hands create. I think that's really actually quite cool. So you can see here that this is cracking quite a bit. Normal, super, super normal. And this is coming up there. I want to actually pull this in slightly. So I want to be pulling this in a little bit. As you can see, I'm just supporting here and then just pulling it in. I'm not making it too thin because I want to keep the same consistency. Sorry. Well, same consistency, but also the same thickness. So we're talking like a half a centimeter, but nobody's going to die if it's more than half a centimeter. You don't want it to be too much less, though, because if it's too much less, then it is actually going to perhaps not support the cylinder that you're going to be popping on it later. So usually with these tutorials, I'm answering all sorts of questions because uh, it's live. But since I didn't properly save the live, you get a whole new one. So with the cracks, um, what you want to be doing is you want to put a little bit of water on your fingers or you want to spray it on there and you just want to just gently do a circular motion just to massage them out. The thing with the cracks is um, if you leave them for too long, they're harder to massage out. And also if you don't massage them properly, like if you don't thoroughly smooth out your surface, then when your vessel dries, they'll kind of re-crack and it's, it's a bit of a bad time. It's not what you want. It's not what you want. Um, I was doing a uh, filming for a tutorial today for August the Label and um, it was actually quite funny, incredibly frustrating but quite funny. I made these mini vases, um, like really tiny ones, and I made them all as an example, like what I've done here, so that I could show exactly what everyone was making. And I'm not joking, four times the wind blew and they fell off the table and smashed all over the ground. So these things happen. You just got to detach yourself from the result that you're desperate for. Um, but I just kept going and eventually I got it done. So hang on for that. So you can see with this that I'm creating that cylinder shape. Now it's going to be really normal. I know a number of you are actually going to be like, oh my God, mine's not a cylinder. What's going on? Don't even worry. Don't even worry. I'm going to show you what to do in a tick. So I'm pretty happy with um, the cylinder. Sorry, not cylinder. The... Um, sphere rather ball hollow ball that i've made i've made sure that it's pretty consistent in the uh, width of the clay all the way around and i've got a pretty big hole there so i actually want to make that slightly smaller um and in order to do that i'm going to need to grab some of my extra clay and I'm going to need to make like little just like this just this is a bit of an illegal um, hand building technique as well you should be scoring this but you know we're living life on the edge here at mud clay play so you want to just kind of go like that just like that and then you want to place that on the inside there just like that so you see I haven't actually uh, placed that upwards I have curved that inwards really deliberately because I want to be making the hole smaller and what I do then is I just pull my clay over the top so I can join it 
And I want to continue this motion all the way around. All the way around. So you can see there, I'm starting to bridge my little gap. And I'd love for you guys to do the same. So again, we're just pulling off a little bit of clay. We're making it the same width as the rest of our sphere. And then we're adding it on. Just like this. Adding it on and then pulling it over. The reason we want to make our um, sphere hole a little bit smaller is because we want to place our cylinder on top. And um, we, well, I mean, I've designed it, so we're creating something similar to that. I'm creating a smaller version here. But you can make it as big or as small as what you want. If you want to make, make it more of a cylinder, you can just bring your hand in and really gently press it outwards, just like that. Cool. So we want to keep on with that motion. Just keep going. Until we've gone all the way around. Now you do want a hole in there. You don't want to make it so that you have no gap or no hole. You definitely want the hole. We just want it to be a little bit smaller than perhaps what it is at the moment. So just doing the same motion all the way around. And there we go. Again, keeping your hole intact. Doesn't need to be pretty. Doesn't need to be a pretty hole. Don't worry about that. It just needs to be kind of cylindrical, like I said, like this. So you see my hole there is not pretty at all, but I'm not going to see it because I'm going to chuck my cylinder on top of that. So what I want to do now is just pop a little bit of water on there. If your clay is already really quite moist or wet, don't make sure that you're not actually putting more water on there. I'm doing this so I can just smooth mine out a bit more, but I'm doing it really gently so I'm not damaging the shape that I've already made. Because you know, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. Just using little circular motions. And again, if your shape is dented, that is the best. That's the best thing about hand building is you've got wonky shapes. We're all wonky, our shapes are wonky. Who cares? You're at home by yourself, nobody knows except for when you post it on Instagram stories and tag me. Thanks for that. So you can see there, I've got my shape. I'm actually gonna set this to one side because I want it to solidify a little bit before I'm putting the weight of my cylinder on there so it doesn't squash. That'd be grim. So I'm just gonna chuck that to one side um, and I am going to start to roll out my cylinder. So the cylinder is actually going to be like relatively square. The height that you make your rectangle here is going to be the height of this portion of your creation. So heaps of people paid me out earlier because this looked somewhat like a bong when it didn't have the handles on it though. So this one's a lot longer than the other one. Do what you want. Don't even worry about it. Whatever takes your fancy. I'm going to remove this because I actually want to use my one of these. So if you didn't um, grab one of these, you want to grab one of these now. It's just like a dishcloth or something like that. Dry, you don't need to wet it um, because we're going to roll out our slab on this. Um, the reason that I use these to roll the slabs is because it's super easy for me to peel the clay off if I'm doing it direct. To the board or direct to the table it'll stick and it's the worst all right so we want to grab 
another, um, a really good portion of our clay. So at least a third of our clay so that we can make our, remember to just take care of your mud again. So I'm just going to really go for it. Use this little guy to start rolling it out. Now, when you're rolling, you want to make sure that you're not rolling all the way to the edges and then making the edges really thin. You want to keep a really consistent, um, a really consistent width all the way through. So I'm talking like a half a centimeter. You don't want it to be under half a centimeter because then it starts to get a little bit flimsy. So I'm going to work on the middle portion of my clay here, just rolling out really quite gently. Now, I've already reached the height that I'm happy with, so I don't really want it to be higher than that. Uh, so then I want to create the width so that I can join my slab. So I'm going to turn that around and start to just create the width here. Oops, I just stabbed my thing with my nail. Okay, so again, we're trying to go for like a half a centimetre-ish. And this is thirsty work, so don't forget, eat your cheese. Have a drink. Do what you need to do, my loves. So I'm just rolling this out. Just making sure that you're checking uh, that you've not rolled it too thin anywhere. Again, you want to keep it real consistent. So, see how easy that was to pull off? Oh, it's delicious. So you can see there that that's kind of a half a centimeter and I'm pretty happy with that. Now, what I'm going to do next is I'm actually going to, I'm not going to use a ruler because we're making wonky shapes and it doesn't need to be perfect. This also doubles as a, a nail cleaner, which is great. Um, so how tall do I want it to be? I'm just going to pull this across here and I'm going to create my square shape. You can just pop your scraps to one side. Um, again, you should probably cover them because you can use this clay at a later date. So you want to be pretty precise with how you're cutting this so you can join it properly. So I'm kind of doing a rectangular shape here. As you can see, and then what I'll do is I will gently pull this around so I can start to make my cylinder. So it's really normal for you to start to have some little splits and cracks appear here. Super normal. You can use a little bit of water only if you need the water. You don't want to overuse the water, but you can just massage these out when you're ready. Now, even though I have uh, pressed these together, so kissed these edges together, um, I actually need a lot to do a lot more than this to join them. So. What I need to do is use my scoring tool. That's this one here. Or you can use your knife. Whatever you've got is fine. And I'm just going to create a little crosshatch motion here. Doesn't need to be pretty because you're not going to see it. Doesn't matter. You just want to create a porous surface so that you can actually lock these shapes together. So it's really important that we're getting the lock here. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this to one side for one second because we want to actually make our slip. So I asked you to get a little dish before. Um, we're going to create our glue now. So how we're going to do that is we're just going to grab a bit of our scraps, chuck it in there, throw some water in there. We want this to be the consistency of like a toothpaste or a butter that's... Um, Room temperature, not in the freezer butter. So room temperature butter so that we can use this for our glue. Now you're going to need enough 
to join your handles. You're going to need enough to, you, you don't need to be overly generous with how much you're actually using on your shape. You just need a little bit to run along the edges. So you can see there that this is, you know, kind of a toothpaste consistency. It's exactly what I'm after. Great result. Now I'm going to run this along the edge here and I'm actually not going to add too much at all. I don't need heaps. So as you can see, I'm just running a little bit along here. There you go. Oops. Just a little bit, just for the joining. Now the shapes that you're making at the moment are actually gonna reduce about 20% in size in the kiln. Um, so whenever you're making something, it will be a little bit smaller after you've done the second firing. And now if you're confused by what I mean by kiln, this is the big oven that you are going to put your shapes in. You can't use your own oven. No, the answer is no. Um, you can't use your own oven because it needs to fire at over a thousand degrees Celsius. This is a mid-fire BRT clay. It's really important that you remember that actually. You need to let your kiln person, your clay person know that it is a BRT mid-fire clay. Write that down. Um, they need to know what temperature they're firing at. If you tell them BRT mid-fire, they're going to know exactly what to do. Um, so I have a list of um, a many number of different kilns available across Australia listed by state. So if you just hop onto the website and you go into the toolkits tab or any tab actually, and you scroll down to the bottom, um, there's a whole bunch of kilns listed by state. You can contact them, let them know that you've got a shape that you want fired. You're going to fire it twice. It's super cheap. I go to Picasso's in Burley um, and it's like $4 for me to fire a shape. It's amazing. Um, also Grit Ceramics for all the Byron legends, Byron and Surrounds. Um, Grit Ceramics, um, we've just partnered with Grit. Um, she is absolutely fabulous and she'll fire your shape for you. Just get into contact with her um, and she'll get you sorted. How good. So what we want to do now, we've added our slip. We want to start to join this cylinder together. Just like that. So we're kissing it together. We're making sure that we're just adding enough pressure that it's, that it is actually kissing together there. We want to use this little guy or your spoon and you can actually start to do a cross hatch motion across here. Bit of a cross hatch motion so that you're joining your shape properly together. So you can see it's a little bit messy there, but that's actually fine because I just want to be pulling clay from one side over the other and clay from another side over here. And then I want to use my finger to run up and down here just to smooth it out a little bit. Just like that. So I've got my cylinder. But what I haven't done is I haven't actually um, joined the inside. So to do that, um, you've got your line on the inside here that you haven't joined yet. So you're going to use the same cross hatch motion, pulling clay from one side over to the other. So you can join the inside. You're not really going to see the inside, but this is just to make sure that you've joined it properly. And then you can kind of just pull that up like that. Then you're good to go. So if this starts to pull apart, you just want to make, you can use a your fingers as well. You just want to make sure that you are pulling the clay over enough that you, it, it creates a join. Hello. So you've got that there. You want to figure out what side you want as your top and what side you want as your bottom. So you can see here that this is a little bit sharp um, and in the kiln it actually becomes sharper. 
so it becomes a little bit sharper so you want to just use your fingers to make these edges a little bit softer so you don't you know cut yourself when you're trying to put flowers in your vase how grim As you can see here there we go that's pretty good so I've got a couple I don't know about you guys but I've got a couple of little splits on my cylinder so I just want to gently massage these out without pressing too hard on my cylinder I want to gently massage these out because these will actually accentuate as this piece is drying so I want to kind of make sure that I'm happy with the joins of the clay isn't this calming you guys oh it's delicious so I am going to be doing these fortnightly by the way so on streaming live on at mud.clayplay on instagram that's mud.clayplay <laughs> um i always upload it to the website afterwards but it's really cute to be able to interact with everyone and feel like you're doing it all together which is super nice okie dokie so now we have our shape here um that we've set for a little bit deliberately so that we can just kind of allow it to solidify ever so slightly now what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to pinch this out so slightly so that i can properly join it to my base shape to my sphere that we just made earlier so you can see this is fluted out really slightly the reason that i've done that is when i'm joining it i want to be able to actually use that to join this shape to this shape. Now, as per use, you guys already know the deal. You need to score this, creating our porous surface so that we can join the shape. And you not only need to do it on this edge here, you need to do it on this edge here as well. And obviously you need to make sure that your coil is actually bigger than your hole. That's really important. If you find that your coil is not um, as big as your hole, you can actually add more like what we were doing before, the same motion, or you can make a wider coil, uh, sorry, a wider cylinder. I keep on saying coil, a wider cylinder here. So that it is, as you can see, this is actually larger than my hole in there which is exactly what i want so you can see that this is why everyone was paying me out earlier of it being a bong because that's exactly what it looks like now i want to make sure that i've got a little bit of slip i am going to use a bit of slip for this just to be safe so i'm just going to line around here that and I'm going to add it to my shape here again adding a little bit of pressure but the reason I can add pressure at the moment is because this is strong enough my base shape is strong enough if your base shape is still floppy or it's not taking the weight of your cylinder just set it to one side for a little bit longer until it can actually take uh, the cylinder the weight of the cylinder so you can see there now I'm going to use this guy to start to join my shape to the base. How are you guys going with it? Hope you're keeping up. And if you're not, you can always pause it. That's the beauty of this stuff. So you can see that I've pulled my mud um, to actually join that there. And it's created a bit of a... Oh, I'm going to use some water for that, actually. It's created a bit of 
a rough surface, which I can just, you can always just smooth it over with your finger. Real easy. Smooth that over with your finger, like that. There we go. So you've got your base shape and now you can do whatever handles you want. So I'm gonna show you a couple of different handles that I love, um, but you know, go for it. Make whatever you want. So initially I'm gonna show you how to make one of these little guys. Now, you're basically going to need to roll out a slab. Again, you might have enough in one of your scraps or you'll just need to do a little roll out one more time. So again, maintaining the size that, or the width that you've used. Now you can, if you want, you can actually trace around something so it's a perfect circle, but I just kind of go for it, you know? So I'm just gonna see if I can create kind of a circle. Pretty happy with that, you know? Pretty happy with that. And I'm just gonna, this is a little bit dry, so I'm gonna chuck a little bit of water on there and I'm just gonna smooth out those edges so they don't cut me later. Now, as I mentioned before, you've got two firings that you need to do in the kiln. One is your biscuit firing. So that is turning your mud, your greenware to one below stone. So after you've done that, it will have kind of a, the clay will be much lighter. And then you can use your glaze, your speckled glaze that you may have bought. Um, otherwise you can chat to your kilnster and I'll be able to help you out with a cone six, cone six glaze. Cone six is just the temperature that it's fired at. It's about 1,200, 1,300 degrees. So I've got my cute little circle there and I'm actually going to press it a little bit down. So again, I create that and you can see this is a bit thicker and I need that so I can pull it onto my shape. So I might, I might put that up there. Or should I put it down there? Ooh, don't know. Maybe I will put it down here. It is cute down there. But you guys put it wherever you want. So again, I'm going to use the scoring technique, bit of a crosshatch situation, and I'm going to do the same on my vessel here. Now, this is a non-negotiable. You've really got to use the slip to join your handles. If your slip is drying out a little bit like mine is, you want to chuck a little bit more water in there and mush that around. And then just line your little handle apply a little bit of pressure once again so I'm, I'm pressing on this a little bit the reason I can press on this is because my shape here is hard enough once again you don't want to press to damage the shape you just want to press that it's going to join you know so I'm just going to wipe this off here and I'm just going to do the same joining motion as what you've been doing all along. Now, your uh, joins for any handles that you're doing are really important because they are the most fragile portions of your vessel. Once this dries, if you knock it, uh, it'll likely just fall off. So you want to be super careful. Now, your aftercare for your clay, once you've made your shape, you don't wanna leave it outside or in a heated kind of full sun position. You wanna make sure that you're actually um, putting it in a cool dry place inside. Uh, the reason you wanna do that is because if I was to leave this outside, for example, oh my gosh, how cute is that? If I was to leave this outside, 
perhaps this side would dry before this side here, that actually creates a cracking motion in the kiln. And when you get it out of the kiln, often it will crack. It's not ideal. So you wanna make sure that it's drying out relatively evenly. And to achieve that, you have to have it in a cool, dry space. Cool, so super cute. Um, I'm actually going to show you a little bit of a decoration. So I'm gonna show you a couple. I'm just gonna put this to one side so I can show you a couple of different styles of decoration. So what I've done here is I've used this tool here and I've actually just pulled out little grooves gently. And then I've used my finger just so it doesn't have any extra and I've staggered it. So I've staggered these because I'm a bit fancy. Um, and then for the little ears, the little road dial ears, um, or Wallace and Gromit ears, whatever, uh, I just have used this. So you can use a knife to create these little grooves here as well. And that is a bit fun. So using those, doing those little grooves, once it's, um, your shape is fired, it kind of has that speckle, really cool, um, really cool little effect there. It's great. Or you can do what I did in tonight's class with this little guy here. And I just actually use, you can do the same with a knife or a fork. Fork would actually be good if you don't have your tools. I use this little guy here and I actually just pulled down. So I just did that all over the vessel, except for this little handle here. I did that all over the vessel. And just gently, if you press too hard, it's going to hack at the clay and you really don't want that. That's not ideal. Okay. So before we start to do our decorating, I'm actually going to get you to, I mean, if you want to, you do whatever handles you want, but I'm going to show you how to do this handle here. And the reason that I'm showing, oh wow, it just got real windy. The reason that I'm showing you this now is because we need to let it sit for just a little bit so that it solidifies um, and it doesn't go drooping. So I'm just going to create the little sausage. I'm going to need a little bit of water on mine because my clay is drying out just slightly. And I'm going to use, to create a coil, you want to actually make sure that you're not pressing down too hard. If you press down too hard, it's just going to flatten the clay. So you want to just touch in the center and roll and pull out. So center, roll and pull out, but really gently, really gently. And eventually you'll start to create a cylinder. If it's skinnier in one bit than it is another, you want to just make sure that you're keeping it pretty consistent. So just keep going and it doesn't matter how long it is because you can cut it off to whatever length you're into. Now, for this one here, as you can see, I've just done like a, um, a, a, a cylinder coil. But what I'm gonna show you now is a flat coil in a second, once I've rolled this out enough. So that's pretty consistent. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. So to create a flat coil, I'd use a ruler, I'd use a um, kind of like a flat surface so that I can just press down on my shape. And what that achieves is it creates it to be flat um, instead of circular. And once again, I'm gonna spray this because my clay is getting a little bit dry. So I'm just going to massage the water into the clay again because if I'm trying to bend this when it is actually um, quite dry, it's just gonna crack. So I wanna be real careful with that. 
So you can see here, I'm going to put that up there because that's super cute, don't you think? But if I tried to put that up there now, it's really flimsy. So it would just droop. So if you want your shapes to maintain their integrity, you just want to take that and put it to one side in the shape that you want it to be in. But I'm also going to create the little lips that I always create so that I can properly join this shape. So as you can see, I've created little feet there so I can properly join that shape. So I'm just going to chuck that to one side whilst then I'm going to decorate my vessel. So once again, here, really cool. I used this one to just really roughly go for it there. But for this one, I don't know. I think I'm going to... I think I'm going to use this guy and just kind of create some grooves. Now, if you're creating grooves, just make sure that you're wiping the little bits of extra clay that you get on your vessel off. Oops. This is fun, isn't it? I feel calm. And if you hate what you've done with this, you can just kind of smooth it over again as well, so. Don't get sad. And the beautiful thing about clay is it's so malleable. So if you don't like what you've done, you can repair it or you can roll it up and start again. And just keep going till you're happy with the result that you achieve. So once again, you can do the little grooves as well, depending on what you wanna go for. If you have any questions, then don't hesitate to contact me. You can email me or Probably quicker way is actually to get me on Instagram. So just send me a direct message and I will try and answer all your life's questions. So if you want to do the live tutorials, which is super fun and funny, <laughs> feels like you're with a little family around Australia, then just follow mud.clayplay on Instagram because that's where they're screened from. Screened? Sure, screened. That's where they are streamed live from. And they're streamed live um, 6 p.m. fortnightly during ISO times. And you know what? Like, this is a social connection project. So this is actually designed for just that. So if you have clay at home, you don't have to buy it from our website. You can hop on and you can get involved. If you're from overseas, you can hop on and get involved. This is for everyone. How's the decorating going? Mine's going all right. Thanks for asking. All right. I'm loving that. That's really cool. And I think I'm actually going to keep the um, circle just how it is. Super cute. I'm really happy with that. So now I want to check on my shape here. So like always, we want to be scoring our shape 
and figuring out where we're going to put it on our vessel. So just making sure you're marking where you want to put it because you want to score that area as well. And you want to be using a bit of slip here again. So on every join that you do for a handle, you want to be using slip. You don't want to go crazy on it, but you want to have just enough to glue these shapes together. And once again, this is going to be the most delicate part of your green wear. Your green wear just means your mud. So before it's been in the kiln. So if I knocked this, it's gonna fall off. So I wanna be super, super careful. Cuteness. So that's a flat coil there, as you can see. Now, just because I've applied pressure and pressed this in does not mean that it is joined. I wanna once again use my joining tool or your spoon, whatever you want, whatever's going. And I just wanna join that. to the rest of my shape. Cute. If this starts to droop at all, that's okay. Just leave it for a little bit of time, leave it for five minutes, and then you can just press it up a little bit once it's solidified a little bit more. But that's actually looking at the goods. Pretty golden with that. You don't want to skimp on the join for your handles. Again, the most... Um, delicate part of your vase but look at that isn't that the cutest mm. you can give that to your mum for Mother's Day but make sure that you've actually popped it through the kiln first so that's our little tutorial today um, really 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 would love to see you at the live tutorials because I love the interaction I love the questions and once again, uh, this is a social connection project uh, by Mud Clay Play in Byron Bay, streaming across the world at the moment. Um, thank you so much for joining me. And next fortnight, we'll be making something extra special. Um, next week, we're actually screening a mini vase tutorial with August the Label. Um, so visit there. Uh, page or the mud page um, and we'll be able to tell you a little bit more about that totally free once again social connection project during iso times um yeah okay uh it was so much fun to play with you this evening and i hope to see you soon